what's up what's good it's your girl jasmine back when i'll be on the channel yes ma'am yes sir so today i'm trying to fix my setup for y'all but today we got a video talking about the fab five if you have not heard the fab five um i guess watch this video with me we're gonna find out uh of course you know i love basketball so i've heard the fab five but i've never seen this video and they said it's a great video so we're gonna go ahead and get into it if you don't know what to do go ahead and like comment subscribe and push the notification bell so you know in case you want our posts if you are a new time first time clicking on this video thank you for clicking on this video hopefully you will enjoy this video with me and check out some of my other videos as well and if this um if you're a consistent supporter thank you for supporting hopefully you will enjoy this video with me don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and push that notification bell so you know case you want our post. But that being said, let's see what this Fab Five is talking about. Let's see. Let's get it. Was the birthplace of a beloved and unforgettable team. Yet in the rafters at Chrysler Arena, the banners that once celebrated those players' achievements have been taken down. At Michigan, this quality is it crazy, is as ain't if it? The Fab Five never existed. Oh, but did they ever? We just had a little flair, a little hmm. style. People call us cocky, but we're more confident team. We figure, why don't they like us? How could you not like us? You know, and if you don't like us, we're going to make you like us. I don't think we ever doubted ourselves from day one. And we knew if we stayed together, we could do anything we wanted to. Brash, confident. We didn't use the word swagger back then, but we had a, we had a hell of a swagger. <laughs> the Fab Five. Chris Webb. I got to ask y'all off rip. What y'all think of the Fab Five? Y'all gotta comment down below. What did y'all think of the Fab Five? Was y'all haters of them? Was y'all like, mm, they too cocky with it, they ain't that good, this is what they get? Or was y'all like, oh, this team about to be nice. This is tough, this is tough. Like, what was y'all's, what was y'all's? I need to know. Jalen Rose, Jawan Howard, Jimmy King, Ray Jackson, the most heralded recruiting class in college basketball history. 15 years ago, they changed Dang, the game. 15 years ago, that's crazy. Oh, running, here they go, the Woo, good. Again, Ooh. In your face. Whoa, you can't jump up in Christian Leitner's face like that. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on? It's kind of like the old versus the new. They worried me a little bit. I wouldn't say I was scared, but they worried me a little bit because they're freshmen and they're real loosey-goosey and out there having a good time. Not loosey-goosey. The most culturally influential college basketball team of its era, the Fab Five brought a new style to hoops, starting with their shorts. Tim Pop was coming in his own thing. We all love Tim Pop. We just wanted to, to have our own style. We, we wanted to be comfortable. We didn't like the tight shorts. They look like girl shorts. I'm, I don't want to look like John Stockton or a ballerina. From a, a, a comfortable standpoint, the baggy shorts helped a lot. <laughs> if you go back and look when the fat Dang, what they started the baggy shorts? That's crazy. I just learned something new. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I played, and you look at Arkansas shorts. Ours pale by comparison. But we got all the credit and blame for bringing in the long shorts. The Fab Five also added black, or did socks, Arkansas start black shoes and bald heads influencing future NBA stars from top to bottom. They were definitely the first people that I've seen wear black socks in the basketball game. It was something that nobody did, but it looked pretty stylish. That was the first time Cass was wearing long, long shorts. Everybody could relate to that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, every time I got a pair, I was trying to, if my shorts wasn't long, I was pulling them down to make them long, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Their playing style was pure street ball, eye-popping alley-oops, rim-rocking slams, Smack talking Who's they coach? Old school college hoops. It wasn't. I don't want to comment on on Michigan winning it at all. It might express. Yo, it. like, look at this quality. That's crazy. Like, I keep thinking it's gonna clear up, but like, this is what we used to look at. Ain't that crazy? Quality has come a long a way. Bigger, a bigger problem that I have with Michigan. You look at it right now. Dang, it's not a big deal. When you see an athlete with a tattoo, or you see an athlete talking trash on the court. A college athlete, athlete being ball head is crazy. Then, it was a big deal. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Look at these thugs. Where did like they on, come from? On purpose. That's what I'm to saying. Like, on purpose of the ball head, that's crazy. Immature, but to others, they exuded a youthful freshness that was exhilarating to be around. I mean, it was hard sometimes to remember that they were 18 years old because they honestly thought they could beat everybody. Yeah, we were cocky. We were brash. You have to be when you're a pioneer. When you're trying to kick the door down, 
you try to establish some for everybody else to follow. In 1992, the Fab Five became the first all freshman team to take the floor in a title game. I would say our legacy is we were five freshmen that went to the national championship game and lost to a senior late in Duke team. We felt that we were more of a oh, team. He's hurt. It wasn't five of us, it was 12 of us. Mm. I'm not sure that a team. Mm. That was a tough, that was, that's tough, coach, because a lot of people forget that. Sometimes it takes more than five to win. We had a whole team, 12 of us. You feel me? That was a tough line right there. Some people forget that. Should ever take on the character of a group within the team. I felt that that was one of the main reasons that it never achieved a national championship. Building on their title game experience, the Fab Five continued to flourish as sophomores. Yet, trailing by two points at the end of the championship game against North Carolina, they defined their college careers in this eight-second sequence. Weber brings it down court. They wanted to travel. Weber to the right side. He did travel. Weber in the corner. And now he's called what? Michigan can't take a timeout. They don't have a timeout. Damn, that's Weeks crazy. Weeks later, with his teammates' support and approval. When y'all seen that, okay, for my fellow supporters that seen that play live in action, what was your thoughts? Like, did you know at the time they didn't have timeouts? Because, you know, like, nowadays on the games, they show how many timeouts they have left. I don't know if they did that back in the day. But did y'all know? Was y'all shocked? Was y'all like, what? Or until after, until they explain it, y'all, then your, your reaction came out. Like, let me know how your thought was. Chris Webber declared for the NBA draft. I decided to turn pro. Um, just decision that I felt was necessary for me to keep going and to move on. The Fab Five was no more. Eventually, all but Jackson would sign NBA deals after leaving Michigan. But in 2002, after a federal investigation uncovered that a booster named Ed Martin had given Weber hundreds of thousands of dollars, the university took action. Dang. This is a day of great shame. And look what they do the now. University. Michigan forfeited games, NIL deal. gave back tournament money, and took down the banners in Chrysler Arena. I resented it. Let's talk about that. Like, I feel like that's extreme. He didn't give the whole team money. He gave one person money, right? That's crazy. Y'all gotta let me know what y'all think about that because, you know, we could talk about that. But some people have their own thoughts, you know, whatever. But it's just crazy how, like, sh strict they take it, you know? It's just, whew. I was angry. I felt as if they caved in to what they thought others might want rather than doing what's right. Right. It did hurt because uh, that never should have happened. People always misunderstood us. They thought that we had an agenda at 18 years old. Which, which is impossible to do. In 2003, Dang, Weber would plead guilty to lying to a grand jury about repaying Martin. By then, Michigan had vacated the records of the Fab Five. Oh. They basically erased their existence. I mean, officially, they don't exist. That's crazy. It's tragic you have, you know, Chris Weber, the star of that team, isn't allowed to associate with that basketball team. And the only way he can get into that building is to buy a ticket. Trust me. If Chris Weber wanted to come back and give him $5 million, to, they would be so fast into his pocket right. that you make your head swim. It doesn't taint us at all. You know, infamy makes you live longer. That's just the bottom line. You can't think of Michigan without thinking of the Fat Five, and I'm proud of that. That's I true. love it, and one day we'll reconcile. One day everything will be okay, because we love it. Well, dang, that's crazy. It's a nice little clip, though. I learned some stuff. Y'all think he's still banned? Y'all gotta let me know. Because, cause, I mean, Juan is the coach there. I don't know if he's seen... I don't know if he went to go support Juan or not. I don't even know if they cool. Are they all still cool? Dang, y'all gotta let me know. If y'all know more information about this down below, let me know down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know any other videos you like to see me do. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and push that notification bell so you know in case I post. That being said, see you guys next video.